I don't draw ugly people because their proportions are all over the place. Bro, somebody check up on all the ugly people out there. All right, guys, so it's time we talk about something really, really serious. Story time. So about a couple weeks ago, I put up a YouTube video covering some TikTok art tips. To my surprise, upon uploading that video, I get a bunch of comments saying, oh my God, it's Cooleen. Oh my God, Cooleen is in this video. Sam roasted Cooleen, nerr Cooleen. So naturally, I become very concerned. I'm like, what is this knockoff Kool-Aid brand that you're speaking of? And someone in the comments was like, she is also a YouTuber. She does roasting videos too. She hurts people's feelings for the entertainment of the people. And I'm like, no way. That type of behavior should not be allowed in the art community. So in this video, we're going to expose this knockoff Kool-Aid character and all of her antics and hopefully keep the art community safe because that's what we do here. So right off the bat, she's growing very quickly like a plague and this is gonna be a problem for the community going forward. Now, Colleen has a tendency to talk like this. So in this video, we're gonna talk like Colleen, okay? So right off the bat, let's look at these popular uploads. Stop doing this, stop doing this. Fake, fixing art, cheating. We don't seem to be off to a very good start here, guys. I am a professional cloud chaser, and I do anything to get likes. Colleen is setting a very bad example for the babies. Never do anything just for the likes, okay? Do it for yourself. If drawing is something that makes you happy, pursue it because it makes you happy, not because of the number of likes that you get, because you deserve better than that. This is the first lesson. Draw only hot people. Drawing hot people is the best option because not only will your followers find it visually appealing, you'll also find it easier. I don't draw ugly people because their proportions are all over the place. This girl woke up and chose violence against the uglies. What did we do to you, you Kool-Aid? Bro, somebody check up on all the ugly people out there. Are you guys doing okay? <laughs> you know what, here's the thing, okay? She's saying something that everybody is thinking at one point or another, but are too scared to say because y'all are a bunch of You might be looking at all the art out there like, oh man, everyone's drawing such beautiful people, but there's actually a lot of history to this. If you look at Renaissance art, if you look at ancient Roman and Greek sculptures, do you know what they tried to do? They didn't just try to capture your average Pontisius Maximus Aurelius who sat in the Colosseum and ate chips all day and had the physique of a yam. Their sculptures and their paintings were often of idealized physical specimens. There's a long history of connection between art and the search for the ideal. They don't search for the ugly. There's no shame in drawing something that is idealized to you. So the next time your parents or your relatives comes over and they're like, wow, you're drawing. Could you draw me? Just say I don't draw ugly people. Which brings us to our next tip. Searching for references on Google is a sin. I don't know if I could call that a tip, I, but if you search- I periodically do that when I need something really specific, but- I used to do that as well, so I know how it feels like to be pathetic. Come on now. Pinterest is your best pal. Oh, Cut me. off all it's your me. ties. All right, so for those of you guys who are new to art and you might still be looking for references on Google, first of all, don't listen to what Cooleen says, okay? You do what you like, you do what makes you happy, you keep doing you, but maybe get with the program. The really good thing about Pinterest is if you click on an image in Pinterest, it's so good. Its algorithm is so good at finding something that looks like that image that's gonna inspire you even more. Okay, so you see right here, there's a girl with an umbrella. Now we're just gonna scroll down to the related images. And what do you know? Look at that, all these Asian girls with umbrellas and crazy costumes look at this they sent me a whole mug for a christmas present for no reason i mean i love these guys tip number three don't get feedback from your snake friends they're always lying to you ah. if you ask for feedback from your friends and they say you're good they're lying. Kool-Aid, I feel like at this point, you might be perpetuating some kind of trust issues between friends, and I don't know if that's really healthy for people. Most friends would rather not hurt your feelings, or maybe they think it's not in their place to tell you that your art sucks, which it probably does. Ask feedback from complete strangers. People who aren't afraid to hurt your fragile ego. All right, Kool-Aid, you walked right into this one. That was a horrible, horrible tip. I completely agree with everything you said. I think you gotta be very, very careful who you take advice from online. Even if it's a complete stranger who you think has good art, they might not give you the best advice. Here's a good analogy, okay? Let's say you're getting your driver's license and you're trying to learn how to drive and you have a coach and this guy keeps running the curb and then giggling about it afterwards. Tell me honestly, would you feel confident learning from this coach? You would just start running the curb and giggling about it and not pass your test next tip use the color wheel well what else am i gonna use huh what 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 huh listen i don't really know a thing about color theory yeah i can tell all i remember is that orange and blue look good together for some reason oh but orange and blue is my 
favorite color combination. If you look at like my work, there's so much orange and blue color scheme going on because that's a complementary color set. You know what else is a complementary color set? Red and green, yellow and purple. Uh, there's this color wheel and then there's this box inside of the wheel. This is literally everything you need. Basically, you lay the base color and then you just rotate the wheel and select a darker color, which makes a huge difference for some reason. It works like magic. This is actually a really good piece of advice. I disagree with it completely. She explained it super poorly. Here, I'll show you guys what's up. What's happening here is you're shifting the hue. What this means is you're going along this rainbow and picking out a different color to base your values and your saturation off of. So if you paint a really poorly rendered sphere like she did, what's happening on the right is you didn't shift the hue, so the colors look dead and flat. But if you actually shift that hue when you go from light to shadow, if you just take this little dot and you move it a little bit to the right, that was the left, a little bit towards the left or a little bit towards the right, it's gonna add a lot more dynamic feeling to your colors. It's gonna make your sh feel alive, man. Come on, man. Next tip, you're not a real artist. I'm looking at you right now. No, 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 don't look around. There's not anybody behind you, no. You. Real artists don't need special equipment or something along those lines. This is bringing back all of my trauma. I'm about to punch my screen. I hate it when people are like, real artists don't use erasers. Real artists don't use references. Real artists don't draw digitally. Like, okay, Gertrude, what do you know about being a real artist, huh? You, why don't you just mind your own business, Gertrude? Why don't you just go back to painting your pottery and knitting your sweaters, Gertrude? Why don't you go back to flirting with the men down the hall at the retirement home, Gertrude? The next tip is to copy other people. I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate for this. It is a fact that nothing in this world is original. You guys know Japan's bullet trains are you, designed to- You- what? Okay, so Colleen, help me understand. You suddenly became self-aware and said you might get a lot of hate for this for saying nothing is original, but you didn't think that would happen for saying you shouldn't draw ugly people? What's going on here? Yeah, that's right. I'm fighting for you guys. You especially, you watching this video. I'm fighting for my ugly brothers and sisters. You guys are human too. No, I'm just being honest. It just so happens that I'm naturally funny. Which reminds me, for every like this video gets. Okay, this canvas flipping back and forth is getting out of hand. You're gonna give me a seizure right now. Please stop. But being a good artist is entirely subjective. So you really have to choose who you want to appeal to. Do you want to appeal to other artists? Do you want to appeal to gamers? Then draw what they want to see. Don't just draw. All I know is that I want to be rich and famous. At least she's honest about it. All right, so here's like our 45th disagreement, Gwilin. It's a good tip, it's a great tip. I completely disagree. Not to be like super cheesy or anything, but I think you should always have a part of you that's just drawing for yourself. Whether it be you're just trying to capture a feeling in the moment, maybe it's happiness, maybe it's anger, maybe it's something that's from the past, maybe it's something that's nostalgic to you. But I think it's important to know that it's okay to just draw for yourself. You don't need to know an audience, you don't need to try to appeal to that audience, but it's very subjective. If you want to be on social media, you need to find a balance between what people want to see and what you want to do for yourself. And you need to be happy with your work. That was actually a really good video. So there's this other video that has 2.8 million views. The ramen bowl method. Yes, you heard that right, folks. Rather than an almond shape, it's actually better to start with a parallelogram. We're gonna draw our ramen bowl into the parallelogram and basically just draw curvy lines to connect it to the parallelogram. I'm also gonna draw the eyelid and the eyebrows. Yeah, I mean, if you're trying to draw somebody who's chronically angry and tired, that's pretty good. I colored the eye with a dark Oh. All right, you know, why don't we give that a try? Uh, what we do is we have a trapezo- Is that what you call it? Trape- I failed math. Okay, so a bowl and then get a ball in the bowl. So ball in the bowl with the bowl. All right, bit of a wonky eye, but add in the dark color for the iris and the pupil. Get a dark upper lid. Let's give it a highlight. Okay, there we go. Let's get some eyelashes in there. Ooh, not bad. Oh, geez Louise, somebody stop me. Oh my God. God, what a... Mm. Okay, you know what, guys? I take back what I said. Colleen is a pretty cool person, and she definitely is a menace to the art community. But I think, you know, even though we disagree on every single point that she makes, she has some pretty good things to say. So with that being said, I want you guys to take home one final piece of advice from this video, and that is don't draw ugly people. But if you're a really ugly person, remember that looks are subjective. Everyone's got a different opinion on what is hot and what is not. There's billions of people in the world and billions of different opinions. No matter how ugly you are, there's someone out there who thinks you're hot. Let that be a lesson to you for the rest of your life. Feel good about yourself. You are hot. 
to someone, just not to me. Anyways, so thanks to those of you guys who commented on my video and brought Kuleen to my attention. I hate everything about her, but I think she's a great person and a really great artist. If you guys want to see more art content, feel free to subscribe to my channel. With that being said, though, I'll see you guys on the next video. I'm literally sweating so hard right now. So, you know, it's, it depends on the person looking at you. Somebody might think you're hot. Somebody might think you're not. Life lesson, if they don't like you, they just don't vibe with you. You just keep doing you until you find somebody who does. It might be hard for somebody like you, but.